Good morning. Uh, all right. Well, now that everybody is awake, <laughs> welcome to the Potassium United Methodist Church. Here are some opportunities for you to join us living out your faith this week. We are collecting wrapping paper and small cardboard boxes for the children's Christmas shop. Please place those donations on the bench in the office entry hallway. English Language Learners meets Tuesdays from 10 to 11 a.m. It is an opportunity for adults to learn English. We are looking for more volunteers for child care. If you have safe sanctuary training, please consider volunteering. If you know of any families that could benefit from this, please take the flyers from the North X. Pastor Carl and Heather will be in Phoenix from October 20th to the 27th. If any emergencies arise, please contact Pastor Terry. Operation Christmas Child Boxes are available. Boxes are due Sunday, October 29th. Also on Sunday, October 29th, a packing party will be held to put together 50 additional boxes. Giftable items of volunteers are needed. Now as a reminder, since Pastor Carl will not be here on the 22nd, the running thing about OSU and Penn State will be honored on October 29th, which means if Penn State does win, we all have to wear blue and white. However, if Ohio State wins, we, we know exactly what color we're going to wear, scarlet and gray. And in tradition of Ohio State send-offs, since Pastor Carl and Heather will be traveling on Friday or Saturday? Yeah. On Friday. Saturday, we're going to give them the traditional send-off. So I'm going to step away from the mic because I get a little loud on this one. <laughs> OH! 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 Safe travels, my friends. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, good morning. <laughs> Welcome to our worship service. We are so glad to have you joining us today. Uh, I wanted to send this around, just sign up so uh, we can make sure Mr. Beeson is here. So please pass this around and sign up for a week if you can. Uh, also, I'm sure many of you have been watching the news uh, regarding the Middle East. Uh, I think our council of bishops wrote up an excellent just statement um, asking for prayers and asking for help. And those are in the back close to where you receive your bulletin. So if you want to read what the bishops have written uh, regarding the Israel and Palestine conflict, uh, please read that. I thought it was a great resource. Also, uh, bless you. Many thanks to everyone who volunteered yesterday. The trustees were very happy uh, with all your work. Also, the VOA, uh, the Volunteer Association of America, uh, will be delivering school supplies Tuesday at 1 o'clock. So if you have any leads on where we can send those school supplies, please let Sarah or I know. Uh, we are getting 14 pallets on Tuesday at 1 o'clock. So 14 pallets of brand new school supply. We want to be salt and light into our community. So if you have any ideas of where we can send some of those 14 pallets out to bless school children, please let me know. We hope that you find the service today uplifting, encouraging, and edifying. Whether you are a regular member or a first-time visitor, we want you to feel at home and loved by Jesus and his people. This Sunday is Laity Sunday, and our lay people will be taking a larger role in our service today. So please give them some love as they share with you. I have seen the strong faith of this community, and I believe the more involvement, the better. If you ever have a testimony or if you ever have a desire to contribute during a future service, please let me know. Thank you for being here, and may God blessly rich you, uh, rich, bless you richly as we worship today. I'll hand it over to the Ashcrafts. Please take it away. Okay. 
I'll start. Something over one. Um, good morning. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Susan Ashcraft, and I've been attending the Pataskalee and I Methodist Church since I was baptized in March of 1953. Uh, <laughs> ignore the people to my left. <laughs> Um, along with my brother and sisters, we attended Sunday school, youth fellowship, and we sang in the junior choir. In the fall of 1970, my senior year in high school, I joined the Chancel Choir. So I want to see a little respect. Okay. <laughs> um, for 20 years, I was blessed to sing with my mom before she passed away. I've served on SPRC, trustees, and nominations committee, and I continue to sing in the choir and help with our prayer quilt ministry and I'm currently chair of the worship committee. In the past week or so, you should have received your flyer, and I hope you've been looking over it. There are many ways you can serve the church. You can help with support meals. The cleanup day was yesterday with the trustees. I lost my place. Um, the children's Christmas shop is coming up, and Kids Eat Free is in the summertime. Uh, you can sign up to, which would help worship, be an usher, a liturgist, help up lock up the church on Sundays after the service, be a backup to the preparation of communion, and helping Sarah out in the office when things need to be put together, letters and, and mailers and stuff. Please look over your flyer and pray about it and sign up where you feel that, that you wanna help serve. Now a public service announcement. Hanging of the Greens will be happening after the worship service on November 26th. We'll be decorating the sanctuary here in Beeson Hall, so many hands make for light work. You are a family to me here at PUMC, especially the choir, and even though there have been some trials and tribulations in the past, I've never thought about attending another church. This is home. Thank you. I don't think I need to talk. <laughs> Thanks. My name is Beverly Ashcraft. I was baptized at PUMC and became a member in April of 1967. As a youth, I participated in Sunday school, youth fellowship, vacation Bible school, and church camp. As an adult, I have taught Sunday school and been a part of numerous Bible studies and book studies. In 2016, I was asked to be on the nominations committee. Since 2018, I have held the position of membership, sec membership secretary, which also places me on the administrative board. Acts chapter 20, verse 35, part B states, truly as Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Please consider what talents you have been blessed with and how you can use them to serve this church and this community. Let's focus our thoughts, bless you, to worship the Lord. This comes from Psalm 19, 7 through 9. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether.
Um, please stand if you're able. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. They are more precious than gold, they are sweeter than honey. is talking about God coming to us. Amanu means with us, and El, short for Elohim, is God. And this is a hymn you can sing, not just during the Christmas season. So let us sing verses 1 through 4. O come, O come, Emmanuel, God to us. Bless you. I will pray for us. 
Heavenly Father, we praise you for your mighty acts of salvation and your faithful provision for your people. We thank you for the gift of manna that you gave to the Israelites in the wilderness and for the gift of your Jesus, for your son, Jesus Christ, who is the true bread of life. Forgive us of our grumblings and discommitment and teach us to trust in you in every circumstance. Help us to share your love and grace with others and to live in obedience to your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Would you please be in an attitude of prayer as I pray for us. Gracious and holy God, we come before you today with gratitude and awe. You have shown us your power and your steadfast love. You have given us your law, which reveals your character and your will for our lives. We praise you for your justice, your holiness, your faithfulness, your providence, your thoughtfulness, and your love. Forgive us, O God, we have sinned and broken your commandments. We confess that we have often put other gods before you, worshiped idols of our own making, misused your name, neglected the rest, harmed our neighbors. We have fallen short of your glory. But we thank you, O oh God, for your grace and mercy. You have not treated us as our sins deserve, but you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us and redeem us from the curse of the law. You have given us your Spirit to write your law on our hearts and enable us to obey you. You have promised to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness when we confess our sins to you. Help us, O God, to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Motivate us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Teach us to delight in your law and meditate on it day and night. Provide examples of people who walk in your ways and glorify and glory your name. We pray for our civil leaders that they may govern us with wisdom and justice, bring peace and harmony among all people. We ask for healing, justice, restoration from the broken, for the broken and the wounded. May those who do not know you hear your voice and respond to your call. We pray for our families that they may be blessed by you and be a blessing to others. We pray for those who are grieving or lonely, that they may be consoled by you and supported by you. We pray for ourselves that we may grow in grace and knowledge of you. Mold us into the image of Christ and use us for thy glory. As your church, we offer this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We worship an abundant God from whose hands flow all the blessings of our lives. May we not use these blessings simply for our own pleasure and purposes. May God give us generous hearts that God's blessings may flow from our hands to those in need. those of you worshiping online, my name's Phil Metzler. In 1937, when Thomas Andrew Dorsey was on a train ride through Indiana countryside, he saw horses, cattle, and sheep grazing peacefully in the same farm field. That made him think, if animals can get along, why can't people? And that led him to write this song, Peace in the Valley. Well, I'm tired and so weary, but I must go along till the Lord comes and calls, calls me away. Oh, yes, where the morning is bright and the lamb is the light and the night, night is as fair as the day. Oh, yes, there will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me. Oh Lord, I pray there'll be no sadness, no sorrow, no trouble, trouble I see. There will be peace in the valley for me. Well, the bear will be gentle and the wolves will be tame and the lion shall lay down by the lamb oh yes and the beast from the wild shall be led by a child and i'll be changed changed from this creature that i am oh yes there will be peace in the valley for me Someday there will be peace in the valley for me. Oh Lord, I pray there'll be no sadness, no sorrow, no trouble, trouble I see. There will be peace in the valley for me. There will be peace in the valley for me.
Washed in your peace and love, O God, we bring our gifts to you. Bless the gifts and the lives that they represent, that all may be used in your service and to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Allow me to pray for us. Gracious and holy God, you have spoken to us through your law and given us your commandments to guide our lives. As we hear your word today, open our hearts and minds to receive your truth and grace. Help us to love you with all our being and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Teach us to worship you alone, to honor your name, to keep your Sabbath, and to respect your creation. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand if you are able for our scripture reading. Exodus 20, verses 1 through 21. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. 
For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day to, your Lord, to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, murder. you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When the people saw the thunder and lightning, and heard the trumpet, and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance, and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself, and we will listen. But do not have God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you, so that the fear of God will be with you, to keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. This is the word of God for the people of God. We're finishing dipping our toes in the book of Exodus. And throughout the book of Exodus, we are reminded of the bigness of God, but also the closeness of God. Last week, we looked in Exodus 16, where God provided manna and quail in the wilderness uh, for the people. We see the closeness of God, God caring for the people. Today, we see the bigness of God, the holiness of God, the vastness of God. And I think that picture kind of shows what the people would have seen. Imagine leaving Egypt and seeing that, the holiness of God, the smoke upon the mountain, the darkness, and the mystery of it all. It profounded them. And they hear these words, uh, the Decalogue, the Ten Words, the Ten Commandments being spoken by God to the people, and they were terrified of the bigness of God. And so at the end of the passage, they say, okay, Moses, uh, you go up there and talk to God. <laughs> I, I had to clean up my Thai collection. I finally dug this one out. Uh, it has some Egyptian hieroglyphs. And we see the first commandment. God says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. It may be tempting, especially when we look at the Ten Commandments or when we, whenever we're given rules, whenever we struggle with hardship, we might want to look back to Egypt so to speak, and say, you know, maybe, I, maybe it wasn't so bad. Last week we looked at the Hebrew people thinking, well, you know, in Egypt we had all this food to eat. It was pretty nice. Let's go back there. It reminds me of Lot's wife. When she was running away, she turned and looked back to Sodom and was turned into a pillar of smoke. Beloved, sometimes when we are freed from God, we might be tempted to look back. Fickle. Amen? <laughs> yeah, fickle. We might be tempted to look back at our previous life and go, man, I used to be able to do this. I used to be able to say that. I used to be able to post on Facebook anything I wanted to. But you know what? I'm in a new life. I'm under the family of God. I belong to Jesus Christ. And so I don't want to do those things anymore. Beloved, it may be tempting to hear these Ten Commandments and and think, well, you know, I could just go back to the old way of living and I, I don't have to worry about honoring God. The key point of the sermon is this, is please God by following the Ten Commandments. Very simple. Please God by following the Ten Commandments. Now, if you remember one of the first sermons I gave here, 
four months ago, I talked about the law of God. Luther addressed the law. He, he basically said, you know, whenever a preacher preaches, the preacher gives the law and the gospel. The law is what we should do. The gospel is what God has done for us. And whenever we look at the law, we see three things. Do you remember, does anyone remember what they were? The three uses of the law? That's okay. The first is a mirror. We use the law as a mirror. Ugh. To look at ourselves and to see where we fall short, right? We use the law as a mirror. So when we look at the Ten Commandments, it, it's a mirror showing us our imperfections. It's good to look in the mirror from time to time. We need the God's law to show us where we fall short. But it's also an instructor, a teacher, a ruler. It teaches us how to live. It, it, it keeps us from doing wrong. It, it protects us and confides us. Uh, I'm in an after-school program where we help share the gospel to children, the Good News Club. And one of the children, they understood that rules are good. They're for our protection. They're to help us, not to harm us, not to bottle us in. And, even, and if our first through third graders can understand that, we as adults can understand that. God is not trying to cramp our style, so to speak. And then, of course, this is the one everybody remembers. The law is a pointer, right? The law is a pointer to Christ. We see where we fall short and we see our need for the gospel. That God sent Jesus to die for all of our sins. And all of the sacrifices in the Old Testament are a pointer to the one true sacrifice of Christ, the one and only sacrifice of Christ on behalf of our sins. So, that being said, as we study the Ten Commandments, don't think, oh man, now I have to do these ten things in order, in order to be going to heaven. Jesus died for your sins, and because of that, we follow God's ways. We don't follow the law to earn God's love, we follow the law because of God's love. Beloved, the Ten Commandments are our starting point. They, they give us our morality. And I think if we've just turned on the TV, you can see what happens when you don't hold on to these ten. You can see what happens when the rules are violated. Now, how people have split these Ten Commandments up varies throughout history. And so I, I was tempted to ask you, you know, let's name the ten in order. But because there are different uh, uh, denominations and religions who separate the ten, you know, if you came from a Jewish background, you numbered it different than those in a Protestant background and those from a Catholic or Greek Orthodox background. So you get off the hook on that one. But you should know these ten. These should be guiding posts for your lives. These laws are the application of God's love in the world. How are we to live out God's love? And we see the ten are divided. The first four are love for God. And the last six are love for neighbor. Beloved, when we look at the Old Testament, we realize how we fall short. Beloved, we see that we do not love God fully. It's a mirror into our heart. And I know and I remember all of the terrible things I've said and done in my life. But I remember Jesus is a greater Savior than I am a sinner. And so as we look at these ten and look in the mirror and we see where we fall short, may you be reminded that through every step, Jesus is a greater Savior than you are a sinner. And for every one time you look in the mirror, Take 10 points to Christ. Look at Christ 10 times for every time you look in the mirror. To quote, uh, I just read this uh, this week, Pierce Brown, he said, When the law is not obeyed, it leaves the ground fertile for tyrants. Indeed, we need the Ten Commandments to help us and to constrain us. Because even war, as he would say, brings demons from angels. God is not a micromanager. That's another misunderstanding as we study the law. God is not this micromanager 
that gets really angry over the petty little things. Rather, God is gracious. God is gracious. We should be thankful that God allows us another day, that God cares about us, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, grows us and strengthens us. God speaks to the people, and the people can't even bear it. It is so powerful to them. And so the first, no other God but God. No other God but God. God is the center of our thinking. God is the source for all logic, beauty, morality, and reasoning. God determines that we are not a law unto ourselves. If anyone determines things on their own authority, they have usurped God's authority and put themselves as equal to God. As Fulton Sheen once said, quote, If you do not worship God, you still worship something, and nine times out of ten, it will be yourself. You have a duty to worship God, not because God will be imperfect or unhappy if you don't, but because you will be imperfect and unhappy if you don't. All the nine commandments, however you order them, all the ten stem from this one. Love the Lord your God. No other God but God. Second, no idols. And, and Paul really uh, hones in on this in uh, the New Testament by showing that uh, idols aren't just things you carve out, but rather th- anything that we place in God's way. If God is there and we put something in between us and God, that's an idol. We must throw our idols away and view our idolatry with the same disgust as God does. Basically, Isaiah 30, 19 says, all our idols are as filthy rags to God. Do we view our sinfulness as filthy, as dirty? And notice this passage says God is a jealous God. God is a jealous God. Sometimes we confuse jealousy with envy. We confuse jealousy with envy. Uh, There's a family here who has a beautiful red Mustang, and I want it, but that's envy. Now, jealousy would be if someone broke into my car and drove it around for a spin, and I wasn't happy that they did that. I'm jealous because they used something that was mine. Jealousy is when someone uses something that's yours or takes something that's yours. Envy is wanting something you do not have. So, difference between jealousy and envy. And the people of Israel, as they were freed from Egypt, they belonged to God. And God says, I'm jealous. I want you. I want your love. I want you to follow me. Don't go to those other idols. They belong to God. And yet, there they went. (laughs) As Moses would go up, and chisel the ten, came back down. What did they do? They made a golden calf. God wants us to seek Christ. God is jealous for us to know Christ. God wants the best for us, and the best for us is to seek Jesus. Number three, do not take the Lord's name in vain. I wouldn't ever defile my mother's name by using it as a bad word. How much more with God's? And not only that, uh, taking God's name in vain is attributing something to God that God never did or God had never said. Beloved, we need to be careful how we use God. Sometimes we use God as the end-all, be-all, as a bludgeon to get what we want. We need to be careful in how we talk about God. And honor the Lord. So the top three talks about our relationship with God. And number four is technically a trick one because it's love of God and love of neighbor at the same time. Honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. Beloved, as I said last week, God wants us to rest. God designed us to rest. We need to take a day of rest to honor God. Whenever we do not rest, we're saying we're like God. (laughs) We don't need to rest. We don't need to sleep. We don't need to take it easy. We don't need to spend time with friends or family. Beloved, you need to take your rest. You need it. God wants you to have it. The Sabbath was made for humanity, not humans to obey the Sabbath. We shouldn't look at it like, 
oh, I need to take rest now. But in this productive fast food microwave culture, we think that rest is a bad thing. Beloved, no, we honor God with our rest. Speaking of honoring God, we are to honor our father and mother. Now, Pastor Carl, my father and mother are passed away, so I get off the hook on this one. Our Pastor Carl, my, I, I'm adopted, so I get off the hook on this one. No. It applies to guardians, it applies to mentors, and you are to honor your father and your mother even if they are no longer alive. And I, I once said this, and a woman came up to me and said, you know, I didn't honor my mother and father when they were alive. And simply, if that is your case, if you struggled with honoring your family, honor them now. Honor them now. It is not too late to respect them, to love them, to love the life they've given to you. Even if they weren't the best mother or father, we are called to honor them despite that. Number six is do not murder. That's pretty self-explanatory. That means even in our own heart, when someone says something you don't like and you start uh, you know, thinking about some things, we should not do that. Beloved, we cannot end an innocent person's life physically or in our hearts. One of the Methodist principles is to do no harm. Seventh is no adultery, which means even in the heart, even when you start thinking it, uh, we should not do that. Beloved, uh, it basically pa places people from being in God's image to just parts on a menu. We lessen people and use them as outlets. We lessen people and treat them as things or ideas in our head or just resources to just use people. We are called to treat other people as they are made in the image of God, to love other people and not treat them as anything less. Number eight, no stealing. Hopefully that will stop you from robbing a bank tonight. But not just that. <laughs> not just that. Uh, one time I had a friend who went into Canada and he took a pamphlet he thought it was free. Uh, <laughs> But it ended up when he got back, and we were very young, when we got back and he looked at it and he said, oh, that actually cost him money. <laughs> it was a little too late for him. Uh, beloved, you know, uh, there was another instance where I had a co-worker who would uh, have cough drops in her bag and she would just leave it out. And, you know, I, I started taking them without even thinking. I'm like, you know, that is kind of stealing. I didn't even ask her permission to do that. So I bought her another bag and I just placed it there. Didn't even tell her I did it, you know, just because I felt so, so guilty. Because if I hadn't done that, she might have lost trust in her other co-workers. Beloved, we, we should be careful not to steal, not to lie about our uh, income and such. We are called not to steal. Number nine, no lies, no false testimony. Beloved, when we start bending the truth, it'll snap back and hit us. People should be able to trust us, and lying does the opposite. If you need to stay silent, then stay silent. But tell the truth, and if you can't, then don't lie. Okay? Amen. Amen. <laughs> And even half-truths are not full truths. Uh, we, we, there can be even lying of omission of information. We need to be careful. And last but not least, no coveting or envying when you want what someone else has. And envying is different than jealousy. Jealousy is uh, longing for what you have, whereas envy is wanting something you do not have. These, very simply put, are the Ten Commandments. It's very easy to say we need to love people. We need to love God. Well, if you want to focus on what does love look like? What does love look like? Well, I think these ten are a great way to start. Because they give us a mirror into ourselves. They show us and give us standards to live by. 
We don't rest on our own authority. We look up to God and ask God for help. And last but not least, they point us to Christ and the forgiveness we have through his blood. Beloved, may you place your trust in Christ. And when you do follow Christ, Jesus lived these ten perfectly. His righteousness becomes ours. And when you obey God, hopefully this will work, things are in perfect oh, balance. Kind of. Like a gyroscope. Not as perfect as I wanted it. But that's okay. You get the picture. Google a gyroscope online. Uh, we are in balance with the Lord. There's nothing more beautiful than walking in God's ways. And when you say, as David says, search me and try me, O God, to know there is no fault within me. You know that you have the righteousness of Christ upon you. You're in perfect harmony with God and you love the Lord. Beloved, have you placed your trust in Christ? Have you trusted that he has provided forgiveness for every one of your sin, past, present, and future? And if you have, will you follow the ten? Will you obey the ten? Not to earn God's love, but to show God's love back to God and into the world. May we please God by following the ten commandments, not suggestions. Amen. Please stand if you're able and sing number 382, Have Thine Own Way, selected verses. Many thanks to all our lay people who were courageous today and stepped out in faith. Thank you for showing your love of God and love of neighbor. You honored the Sabbath today. Let us go forth with the Lord at our side, seeking goodness and compassion. Bring the words of hope and peace to all whom you meet. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>